Hope Taylor and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am a photographer based in Charleston and Savannah and today I'm going to talk about something on this channel I've never talked about before and that is wedding photography. I typically don't talk about wedding photography on this channel because I primarily photograph high school seniors. That is like my bread and butter. That's what I'm known for. I love photographing seniors but I do also photograph weddings and I broke into wedding photography when I was only 18 years old and I broke into it by learning how to be a second photographer or an assistant photographer first. And today I want to talk about the biggest mistake that I made in that season that I want to help you avoid. Before diving into today's video, I have a free gift for you that I would love for you to download. It's in the description down below and I'm giving away the five programs that I cannot live without in my photography business. So the five things that I use pretty much daily that help my business run, help me to make things aesthetic, help me to have streamlined workflows. And that's just my free gift to you to say thank you for tuning in. So if you want to download that guide, the link's in the description, but let's dive into what I want to talk about today. So a little bit of a history lesson, if you haven't been following me for a long time. I started my business as a 17 year old when I was a junior in high school. So the first two years of my business were spent while I was doing homework in between AP classes and cheer practice. And it was a crazy time. And it was also a time of me having to gain my clients trust. I think no matter when you start your business, no matter what age you start, you have to go through a period of earning people's trust and showing them, Hey, I know what I'm doing. I know how to take quality images. I know how to provide a good client experience. I'm worth your investment. But when you're 17 years old and you barely have a driver's license, there's like kind of a different level to that, right? I have to gain confidence and gain the trust of people working with me to not only tell them that I know what I'm doing and that I'm professional, but to show them that I'm responsible and that I'm not immature or just a typical high schooler, right? So I went through a season of wanting to not shoot weddings solely because it made me really nervous to have to take thousands of dollars from a couple that was anywhere from five to 10 to 15 years older than me and know that I was confident in what I was doing. And so instead of diving right into photographing weddings, I spent a full year second shooting for other photographers. And if you haven't heard that term before, it's technically just a photographer that tags along with the main photographer to help them get supplemental images on a wedding day, capture a second angle, carry bags, and help with the technical back end of the photography on a wedding day. So it's basically just like being somebody's assistant or sidekick. And I wanted to gain a ton of experience doing that before I ever broke into photographing my own weddings. One, because I wanted to earn the trust and the portfolio images and gain the experience. But two, because I was 17, I had never been to a wedding and I literally didn't even know the difference between a ceremony and reception. I'm not joking. And so I wanted to be sure that I was getting a lot of experience before I stepped into the role as a lead wedding photographer. But one of the things that I did wrong, the biggest mistake I make that I literally look back and cringe at is that I completely misunderstood and misjudged what my role as a second shooter was. I was walking into most second shooter opportunities very selfishly wanting to gain things for myself. If we're just being super transparent, I walked into second shooter opportunities and I was like, how can I get the best images for for my portfolio? How can I get the most experience out of this opportunity? How can I network at this wedding? And I wasn't thinking about how I could necessarily help the lead shooter and make their client's experience even better. I was thinking very selfishly as a high school student <laughs> sometimes does. Um, and I wasn't thinking in the right perspective about second shooting. So the biggest mistake I made in one sentence is that I was not clear on what a second shooter's responsibilities were. So what I want to break down today is that I don't think it's a bad thing for second photographers to have a little bit of an ulterior motive, which I feel like almost has a negative connotation, but it doesn't have to. It's okay for you to go into second shooter opportunities, hoping to gain things like experience and exposure and networking connections. Those are all fine, but that should not be your number one priority. And the biggest way to avoid this and to fix this problem is to get clear on the lead photographer's expectations of you before you accept or deny a second shooting opportunity. Because what I learned in my full year of being a second photographer is that different lead shooters have different expectations of their second photographers. Some lead shooters rely heavily on their second photographer to get supplemental images. Your number one job is to take as many photos as possible, which sounds like it would be the most straightforward 
like job for a second photographer, right? But some photographers would rather you just help them carry bags and they would rather you not take photos, but instead help them change lenses and expect their next move and bring them their light stands and really just be on your toes for how to help them maximize their time on the wedding day. And maybe they instead want you to really focus on loving on the bride. Maybe the lead photographer is super introverted and you are super extroverted and they want you to be the one that's running to grab the bride a drink and checking on her and helping her with her shoes and helping her button her dress. Everybody has different expectations, but I used to accept every single second shooting opportunity that came my way without getting clear on those expectations ahead of time. So step one is get clear on the lead photographer's expectations of you. What do they want your priorities to be on the wedding day? What types of shots are they expecting you to capture? What types of ways do they want you to engage with their client? How can you serve them and go above and beyond for them? And then step number two is get clear on your goals and your expectations as the second photographer because it's okay to compare what the lead photographer wants from you versus what you want to get out of that opportunity and decide actually that's not a really great opportunity for me it's okay to say no you don't have to say no to every opportunity that comes your way but you do want to be sure that your expectations of the day align with the lead photographer's expectations of the day to be sure that you guys are a good fit so i think that there are three priorities that second photographers can have going into a wedding day or or three common goals that second photographers have that they're looking to get out of those experiences. Number one is the most obvious, and that would be portfolio images. This is what I was always looking for. As somebody who had never shot a wedding before, I was going into wedding day opportunities as a second shooter, looking to get as many high quality website worthy images as possible. But the problem with that can be that if your lead photographer's goal is for you to just carry bags, you are not going to go into that wedding day getting the image Images that you want and you're gonna end up feeling a little bit frustrated and so is the lead photographer because you're not there to help them you're there to get images and if that doesn't align and match up then you don't need to accept that opportunity the second goal that second photographers might have is that they want to just get experience right maybe you don't care if you take a single photo you just want to be there and you just want to watch the wedding day unfold and how the timeline functions between the ceremony and the reception and how the photographer handles sunset images to get the most out of that short period of time Maybe you're just looking for experience. And if the photographer that you're working with is looking for you to photograph the wedding day as much as possible, and you're moving so quickly that you can't soak up what's happening around you, that might not be a good fit for you because you might not walk away feeling like you got as much experience as you were looking for. And number three is that you might be looking for networking opportunities and connections as a second photographer. This one can be a little touchy because when you are helping a lead photographer at a wedding day, your job is to be an extension of their business and their brand and their client experience. You are not there to represent yourself ever. So you never ever want to market yourself. Your goal is to make uh, the lead photographer look good, right? So maybe you just want to meet some vendors and see how different parts of the day function and see how a videographer works with a photographer on the wedding day and see what time the florals typically arrive. All of those things are fine, but you just want to be sure that you aren't crossing the boundary of trying to overly network for your benefit on another photographer's time. So I would say to just cross out number three as a priority as a second photographer, just know that it's okay to go into a wedding day expecting to get portfolio images and expecting to get experience as long as that aligns with the leads photographer's expectations of you. Get clear on that ahead of time and then go in it and crush that wedding day and gain that experience so you can crush your own weddings. But I hope that this video was helpful and provided some perspective on how to clear up that issue and clear up the expectations before you ever walk into the opportunity. I would love for you to download that free guide below to learn more about the programs I use in my business. Be sure to subscribe to see my new videos every week and I will see you guys next time. Bye.